No, no, I can't talk now. Tell him I'll call him back. Can Mr. Grant call you back? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Harry, don't take a message. I'll call him back. Oh. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll give him that message. Thank you. Mr. Grant, you're not going on vacation. You're going to the hospital. Just give me the message, Mary. The message is you are going to the hospital. <laughs> the doctor said he got you the private room and he'll meet you at St. Matthew's at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Now, Mary, I know you've never been fully in charge here before, but... Mr. Grant! Have... Hmm? Is it serious? Oh, just an old piece of shrapnel. Shrapnel? <laughs> World War II. What, was it bad? I mean... Where were you wounded? Let's just say France. But that had to be over 30 years ago. Why, why do you need the operation now? I don't know. I guess it kind of shifted around, and now it's in sort of a funny place. And the doctor thinks he ought to get it out. It's really minor. Why didn't you say anything until now? Because I don't like a lot of sympathy. I don't want the cards. I don't want the flowers. I don't want the death watch. So please don't tell anyone. Not, not even Murray? Oh, Murray's okay, but don't tell Ted. Definitely not Ted. <laughs> Definitely not Ted what? Uh, I, uh... Oh, well, we were uh, just discussing uh, the budget problems, and, and I was asking Mr. Grant whose salary we could cut. And he said, definitely not, Ted? <laughs> Thanks, Lou. All right. What's going on? I got an announcement to make. All right, everybody, just a brief announcement. I am leaving today on a week's vacation. While I'm away, Mary will be producing the show. Now, I have complete confidence in her. I want you to treat her just like you treat me, with respect, <laughs> trust, and a certain amount of fear. <laughs> See you guys in a week. Mr. Grant, huh? um, take care, and listen, everything's going to be all right. Right. Have a nice time, Lou. Thanks, Mary. Where are you going, Louis? St. Matthews. Uh <laughs> That's a great place. I hear the beaches there are terrific. <laughs> Send me a postcard. All right. Newsroom. Oh, we'll you have to talk to the producer about that. Hold on just a minute. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Grant. Hi, Mary. Listen, I want to apologize for the flowers. I mean, I know you hate this kind of thing. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, it's a hospital, and coming in empty-handed just... I, I don't know, it seemed wrong. That's okay. Forget it. What do you got in there? A chocolate malt. I tell you, the last time I was in the hospital, all I could think about day and night was a chocolate malt. Mm. You see, Mary, that's the difference between you and me. <laughs> Since I've been in this hospital, I haven't once thought about a chocolate milk. No <laughs> things at the station. Oh, fine, fine. There, there is one thing, though. I, I, I did as you asked. I, I mean, I didn't tell anyone except Murray that you were coming Good. to the hospital directly. <laughs> what do you mean directly? Well, Ted overheard. Oh, Mary. <laughs> he insisted on coming with me. Oh. Well, where is he then? Well, he's, he's down the hall. He stopped to sign an autograph. <laughs> Might take him a while, though. He was still explaining who he is. <laughs> you big lug. <laughs> Telling everybody you're going on vacation when you're going into the hospital. Isn't this big lug something else? <laughs> Didn't want to worry his old friends. How are you feeling, you big lug? <laughs> suddenly worse. I thought it might might cheer you up after the operation to watch the news. So, I got you one of these. Oh. Listen, Mr. Grant, I really have to be going. I have a date. I just stopped by to give you the... and the... And the... <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Uh, so, Ted, I guess we'd better be going. Oh, no, I'll uh, stay for the ship. There's uh, still two and a half hours yet for visiting. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. I'll take a cab. <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Grant. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, what do we
we're gonna do now, Lou? What do you say we watch TV? Let's turn on the old tube and watch Cronkite goof up. I don't think so, Ted. What's wrong with this remote control? It's for my bed. Oh, Ted. Hey, Ted. Hey, isn't this fun? Ted. Ted! Oh. I'll tell you what, let's just, uh, <clears throat> let's just sit and talk. Ted. I feel sort of tired. I, I'd like to be alone. Oh, well then you know what I ought to do? I ought to leave. <laughs> That'd be nice. If you need any blood, don't worry. I checked. You and Mary have the same type. <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, well, is the crew there already? Uh huh. Just a second. Let me check. Okay, listen, send the crew to Councilman Davis's news conference instead. Right, bye-bye. Boy, you've really got things under control. Well, so far, so good. Yeah, you're doing everything just like Lou, but prettier. Except for one thing, you haven't checked my copy. Oh, hey, come on, Marie. Now, go ahead, I that. insist it's your job to go over my copy, even though you won't find anything wrong. Oh, Murray, I don't... Now, go ahead, kid, you could use the experience. <laughs> What's that? Oh, just uh, spelling. Just. Oh, yeah. I transpose those E's and I's all the time. Oh, well, it's I before E except after C. Yeah. Thanks for catching it. <laughs> spelling again, huh? Yeah, you spell principal wrong. Um, you want to know a good way to remember? The principal of your school is your pal, P A L. Nice. Nice. <laughs> The spelling again? Oh, no, no, I just... I don't know, it seems to me that calling a fire a raging inferno is, well, you know, used a lot. And what did you change raging inferno to? Fire. <laughs> and that isn't used a lot? Terrific, why didn't I think of that? Calling it a fire, F-I-R-E, fire. Did it hurt when they took that shrapnel out? Not as much as when that went in. <laughs> I brought you flowers again. I'm sorry. I just, I don't know. I don't seem to be able to help it. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Hello. Hello. So. Well, Lou, how's I think... everything? Uh, well, look, I, uh, I'm, I better get going. Uh, I'm glad you're feeling okay. Thanks for coming by, Murray. Bye, Mary. Bye, Murray. So, how are you feeling, Mr. Grant? Pretty good. Oh, I'm glad. And I promise that's all the sympathy you're going to get out of me. No more. <laughs> Good. Say, what's with you and Murray? Uh, Murray? Nothing. Everything's just fine. Fine. Mm. Is there anything I can do for you? No. You already done enough for me by not bringing me a chocolate malt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Lou. Hiya, Mary. Lou, I was talking to some of the nurses down the hall. You're going to live. <laughs> <laughs> but I do get tired easily, and I shouldn't see people for very long. Mary? Maybe you better. How are you feeling, Mr. Grant? A little better. He's fine. He's going to be all right. Uh, we know. Uh, Mr. Grant, it's time for your shot. Oh, well, listen, I, I've got to be leaving anyway. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye, Bye. Bye. Uh, uh, Wait, wait a minute. Listen, nurse. I'd rather not have that shot when there's a woman in the room. I mean you. Uh, look, why don't you just leave that here? And I'll give it to myself later. And really, I know how. I was with the Associated Press in Detroit. <laughs> I'll come back later. Oh, fine. Lou, hmm? here's a little something I picked up for you. Ted, this is great scotch. The best. Top of the heather. Oh. Age 22 years. Top of the heather? You know, I've always wanted a bottle of this. Who gave it to you? <laughs> gave it to me. I went down to Metropolitan Liquors and asked the man for the very best scotch he had. Oh. Oh, they made a mistake. They left the price tag on. Look at that. $24. Uh, Ted, th th this isn't like you. You really went all out. Well, when your best friend's in pain, you, you can't do too much. 
Best friend? Yeah. I'm your best friend? Yeah, I thought you knew that, Lou. Ted, I holler at you a lot. No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> no, you don't. There's Ted Baxter, the newsman, and Ted Baxter, the buddy. You don't yell at me, you yell at him. <laughs> Ted, let me, let me ask you something. If I'm your best friend, who's your second best friend? Oh, I don't know, maybe Murray, Barry? <clears throat> it's, uh, I don't know, it's uh, hard to say. Uh... Well, I guess I've been <clears throat> running along. <clears throat> Ted? Yeah. Why don't you stick around and have some scotch? All right. Guess I can spare a few minutes. You wanna, you wanna pour? Okay. Ted, boy, you're coming down here in the scotch and all. It's, it's really something I appreciate. Here's to a speedy recovery. <laughs> Thanks. You know, you never told me how you got that injury, Lou. Hmm? What's to tell? It was World War II, France, grenade. Well, those rotten nips. <laughs> Crowds. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, what do we do now, Lou? Say, would you like to play some cards? No, I don't, I don't feel quite up to that. No. I'll, I'll read to you. What if I read to you? Mm. <laughs> hey, this looks pretty good. The world of health. You just relax. <laughs> the world of health. Published by Adirondack Publishing Company, 4817 North End Street, Syracuse, New York. Okay. <laughs> I think you can skip that part. <laughs> okay, what do you say we skip right over to the table of contents? <laughs> what sounds good to you? Tooth enamel, how to give it the brush, or the many myths about pancreatic fluids? Oh, I don't know. Uh, what was that article about tooth enamel? That sounded kind of interesting. <laughs> there it is right here. For centuries, Man has known of the miraculous properties of tooth and nail. But not until recently was the evolution of these properties fully comprehended. To follow this evolution step by step, we must begin with the tiniest... Microorganism. Micro until we reach that most complicated of living species, man himself. Murray, I think that one of the reasons that you and I are having problems is because we're both concerned about which one of us is the boss. And Murray, it doesn't matter to me which one of us is the boss. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're upset because I've been checking your copy. Not checking, Mary. Changing. You've been... You've been arbitrarily changing everything I've written with a squeaky magic marker. <laughs> well, Murray, maybe it looks arbitrary to you, but it certainly isn't arbitrary to me. I think I know more about this than you. I have been writing copy for 17 years. You've only been checking it for four days. I am just trying to do what I think is right. Mr. My, uh, my office. Hi. Yeah, he is. Uh, hang on just a second. It's Marie. Thank you. Hiya, honey. What? Oh, great. Yeah, that'll be fine. Well, look, I'll stop by the store and pick up some logs uh, so later we can sit in front of the uh, raging inferno. <laughs> Yeah, about 7 o'clock. Bye, honey. Now, as you were saying... Okay, look, maybe unconsciously I have been a little, you know, bossy, but 
Murray, honestly, it's just because I'm trying to do a good job of running this office, you know? And part of that job is being the boss. I mean, look, you could just as easily be sitting behind that desk, and I could just as easily be sitting... <laughs> you know what I mean. Sure. Aw, oh, come on, Murray, you don't understand at all. Now, couldn't we just sit down and talk this out? Okay. Listen, I think that part of... Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mayor. I, I just wanted you to know I just got back from the hospital. Everything's going to be hunky-dory. Lou's checking out tomorrow. Oh, gee, that's good. Getting chewed out by the boss again, Hummer. All ready to go, Mr. Grant? Uh, yes, sister. Mm -hmm. Oh, aren't you forgetting this? What? Oh, yeah. This explains a lot. The nurses have been wondering why you've been turning down the painkillers. <laughs> oh, by the way, I brought you this. It's the little piece of shrapnel that they cut out. Yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Grant. Stay well now. I think I will. People seldom throw grenades at me now. <laughs> Don't you want that, Lou? I've had it. <laughs> You're not going to leave it here, are you? You want it? Can I? <laughs> it's yours. From one friend to another. <laughs> I'm not what you call a physical person. You're one heck of a man, Lou. One heck of a man. Okay, Mr. Grant. In we go. Do I have to? Yes, Mr. Grant. It's the rule. Uh, I'll, I'll do this first. You all set, Lou? Mm -hmm. Why is it I suddenly feel like solving a crime? <laughs> Hi, Ted. Boy, it's great to see you back where you belong. Well, thanks, Ted. Here you are, old buddy. What? A little memento. Those good old days in the hospital. Oh. Ted. That was very thoughtful of you. What is it? It's a paperweight thing had it made. Yeah. See, there's a piece of shrapnel. Huh. And the calendar with the day when you had the operation. Uh huh. And the hospital ID bracelet. Oh. Because I didn't have time to have it inscribed yet. Boy. Ted, this is really something. You wanted oh. to see us, Mr. Grant? Yeah, I did. I'll just run along. I'll get this inscribed for you. Ted, that was very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. And a heck of a surprise. Well, there's a bigger surprise coming later. This is just one of those little things one pal does for another. Oh, thanks, Ted. <laughs> He's really a terrific guy. Ted? <laughs> no. No, really. You, you don't know him like I do. You, you wanted to see us, Mr. Grant? <laughs> yeah. I watched a show last night. And I'd like to know how an associate producer who's been around here for two years can get things so fouled up. Well, uh, Mr. Grant, Explain I... to me what? While I was hearing Ted's voice describing the arrival of the new water buffalo at the Minneapolis Zoo, I was watching film of the vice president returning from his trip. <laughs> and Ted's voice saying, and here's the big ox now, lumbering down the ramp with his hand. I know, Mr. Grant. You know that you have to check to make sure the films and the narration match. I'm sorry. Ah, but sorry. You... Mary. It wasn't her fault. No, Murray, it's okay. No, it, it isn't. She did a good job, Lou. Well, you did. And look, I'm sorry about oh, all this. Murray, listen, me too. I really... Just... Now, look, she was just covering for Ted, Lou. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Listen. I think it's time we stopped blaming Ted for all our goof-ups. Our goof up That's right. That's right. I think we've used him as the scapegoat long enough. Scapegoat? Scapegoat. Lou Grant. Yeah? <laughs> Terrific. Terrific. All right. Get a, get, a, get a crew right over there. If we hurry, we can get it on. Go on! Talk about the old Grant luck. 
And on my first day back... What? What is it? <laughs> the police have four hold-up men trapped in the bank across the street. Right across the street! If we hurry, we can get it on film, and we'll be the only station in town to do it. What a welcome home present. How's it coming, Murray? I'll be just a second. How's it feeling? Ah, the crew said they got great stuff. Oh. Andrew! Well, I hope Ted can handle that. I didn't have time to make all the words simple. <laughs> Knock that stuff off about Ted, Murray. <laughs> The industrials were up three points and rails were up one and a half. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange was 13,250,000 shares. Here it comes. I've just been handed this bulletin, but it'll have to wait. <laughs> what? I have something that's more important than any bulletin could possibly be. What could be more important? I'd like to devote the closing two minutes tonight to a special tribute. A tribute to a heck of a guy. <laughs> What's he doing? And Read the bulletin! <laughs> and who is that heck of a guy? Lou Grant. The guy I'm proud to call my friend. Lou Grant is back on the job tonight, and we're all the richer for it. For you see, Lou Grant happens to be the producer of this newscast. Lou was in the hospital this past week for a delicate operation. It was touch and go for a while, as a team of dedicated surgeons went about removing this. His blood. Yes, Lou Grant spilled his blood on the battlefields of France so that we might all be free. I'll spill his blood. Lou Grant did his part for America. He gave everything he had, fighting the Axis menace. Now it's time for us to do our part. I personally, as of this moment, am boycotting sauerkraut. <laughs> that first, and Rita Schnitzel. I urge you to do the same. Now it's true, many people may be saying, big deal, Ted, you don't like this stuff anyway. <laughs> well, that's true. But the point is, it's the thought that counts. So what do you say, Mr. and Mrs. Twin Cities? It's your turn to stand up and be counted. Don't do it for me. Do it for Lou Grant. <laughs> and yourself. Oh, here he is now. Welcome back, Lou. Good news and good night. Why'd you pull me off like that, Lou? I had 30 seconds of tribute left. Ted, get in my office. Ted, get in there and stay there until I come in. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think you two better get out of here. Mr. Grant, don't, don't you think you ought to cool off a little before you talk to Ted? Uh, why don't you wait until morning? Mary! Good night. See you, Lou. Oh, Mary, New York was just fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely endless. The Philharmonic was in town. They were doing La Traviata at the Met. Oh. And imagine seeing Edward Villella dance with the uh, New York City Ballet. Oh, wow, oh. you did all that? <sighs> of course not. But you know it's there. Right? <laughs> see, Mary, don't you see, here in, in Minneapolis, when nobody asks me out, it's nothing big. But there, when nobody asks me out, I'm not being asked out to a Broadway opening. Uh-huh, and not going to Sardi's afterwards. Right, I knew you'd understand. Uh-huh. Would, would you like some coffee? Yeah, I would, kid. How are you folks? Oh, they're good. Pretty much the same old thing. Mostly we sat around the kitchen table talking over old times. Why Rhoda never married. <laughs> Why Rhoda may never get married. <laughs> Robert Redford, that was my topic. Uh-huh. <laughs> But generally, uh, everything was good. Ah, just terrific, terrific. Oh, Mary, you know that store, Bloomingdale's? Yeah, sure. Well, I was in there, and uh, guess what? What? <laughs> they offered me a job as a window dresser. Oh, yeah. hey, Rhoda, being able to turn something like that down must be so great for your ego. I mean, isn't Bloomingdale's, you know, sort of it for window dressers? Oh, yeah, Mary, it really is. The big time. Oh. <laughs> See, uh, I didn't turn it down. What? Now, I know, Mayor, the idea of you being here and me being there absolutely kills me. 
I'm gonna miss you like crazy, kid. But New York City really turned me on. I miss it. And I don't know, it's such a great job offer. Well, yeah, Rhoda, sure, I can understand all that. Yeah, really, but Mary, I said yes on an impulse, but it seems right. Aha, uh -huh, you said yes on an impulse. Yeah, but still, yeah, I, well, that's I... entirely different. Rhoda, I know you and your spur-of-the-moment decisions. Oh, no. Look, we will talk about it quietly, calmly, and eventually you will decide what's right, and you'll stay right here. <laughs> I start next Monday. <laughs> next Monday? Yeah. So, uh, Mary, do you have any cartons? Cartons? Yeah. Oh, what are you laughing Rhoda, at? Rhoda, come on, I know you. You're not going. Yes, I am. Not a chance. Come on, this is Rhoda Morgenstern. The same Rhoda Morgenstern who once swore she was going to lose weight by walking across the United States. <laughs> that was different. This time I'm really going. But I'm not walking, I'm flying. Okay, all right, all right. Now that we both know that you're not going, uh, what was the question? Do I have any cartons? Uh-huh. Yes, I will need a great deal of them for packing and such. Right. Yes, Rhoda, I have a carton. And every time I go to the market, I will bring home more cartons, and soon you will have dozens and dozens of cartons stacked up in your apartment already and waiting for when you don't move to New York. Well, this will hold a wiglet. <laughs> I'm going to go upstairs and unpack. So, I can start packing. <laughs> See you later, kid. She's not going. Hey, kid, I gave notice this morning to Phyllis on the apartment. Oh, that's terrific, Rhoda. That's just, get, you just keep right on doing things like that, giving notice, packing cartons. It's just gonna make it more embarrassing for you when you don't go to New York and you have to undo it all. Hey, look, Mary, a home life's empty booklet with absolutely blank pages. Can you use this? What is it? My date book. <laughs> hey, Mayor, oh, I almost forgot. Can you do a favor for me? Yeah, what? Could I leave my goldfish with you? I didn't know you had a goldfish. Yeah. I named her Goldfish. Seems to fit. <laughs> yeah, I had her a couple of days now. I went out to get little Beth a present, and I went by this pet store, and there was this adorable goldfish with the cutest little gills, and looking up at me with those big limpid eyes that seemed to say, Talk me home! <laughs> what could I do, man? Huh? Well, I thought you were going to give it to Beth. Yeah, I thought so, too, but Phyllis started carrying on about how she only has rare tropical fish in her tank and would not allow a mongrel fish in there. Oh, yeah. Phyllis and her fish. But you know, Mary, it's just as well. I guess I always wanted a pet. I just didn't want to get a poodle or anything. You know how dumb people are with poodles? They talk to them like they're people. Yeah. <laughs> Don't they do that, Mommy? <laughs> Say hello to Auntie Mary, goldfish. <laughs> See those bubbles, Mary? That's high Auntie Mary in goldfish. <laughs> Come on and say uh, hello to goldfish, Auntie Mary. No. <laughs> She's just shy. So, Mary, will you do it? Will you take care of my darling goldfish? Or do I have to flush her down the toilet? <laughs> I will take care of it. You'd be amazed what good company she is. She's uh, fairly quiet, uh, not a fussy eater, and generally amuses herself. <laughs> I have no idea. Hi there, Barry Barlow. Hi. Hi there. Hi. There. I was just kind of uh, looking around for a new bachelor pad, and Mrs. Lindstrom sent me up to look at this one. You chicks, uh, roommates? Uh, no, no, this is her pad thing. Where do you live? Oh, well, I live elsewhere. Far out. Hey, this pad is really something. I think I could really get it together here, if you know what I mean. Hey, that Mrs. Lindstrom, she's not going to give me a hard time about entertaining chicks up here, is she? Oh, uh, well, she... Last place I lived, I was going out with three different chicks all at the same time. Airline stewardesses on different shifts. If you can dig that. Sure. <laughs> Barry, this is fascinating, but I have a great deal of packing to do, so if you don't mind... Go right ahead and pack. Yeah, this place is really okay. You know, it's only five minutes from the store. I'm in shoes. Discount shoes. Of course, for new neighbors, I can always discount the discount. Oh, well, that's very nice of you, but uh, I, I don't think... Name of the game. 
I can put you into a pair of Italian boots, new slim heel, for, say, $11.99. Huh. What are you, about a uh, 7A? B. Right. Anyway, after I move in, we can talk about it over a little martini. Gee, Barry, I, um, I really, uh... I, I, I don't, uh, think so. Why not? Well, because cause I'm, uh... You're what? Getting married tomorrow. Oh, right, tomorrow. And I'm really so busy. Lots to oh, do. Right. Yeah, we still have a lot of tin cans to tie to her bumper. Right. Well, let me know if the old wedding falls through. Will do. Ciao. <laughs> oh, Rhoda. You see what you'd lead me to, Mr. Hi there, Barry Barlow. <laughs> I know, kid, I know. Well, I'm finally starting to make a dent in it. I'll be right back. I have to get some cartons from the hall. I've got to start shipping everything to New York tomorrow. Uh, Rhoda, hey, would you please stop saying that you're going to New York? Just as a favor to me. Because you're not going. You're staying right here. Isn't she goldfish? <laughs> Nod twice for yes. Both sides came to an agreement. After 36 hours of steady, across-the-table bargaining. Afterwards, negotiators said that the new contract would be like a brush of fresh air. <laughs> it's like a breath of fresh air. I can't take much more of this, Mary. Well, you better bear up. There's six more minutes to go. And so it appears the strike will be averted. That's all the news. This is Ted Baxter saying good news. Good night. Good night? Good night. There's six more minutes. The clocks are all lost up, right? No! We had to get off for an editorial, Frank, right? He just stopped. Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> Say, anybody know how many calories in lasagna? <laughs> Tell you what are you doing? Get back in there! It's too late. Well, they just found a public service thing. I don't understand what everybody's so upset about. Ted, you stopped six minutes early. You see, Ted, usually when we give somebody 30 minutes of airtime, we assume that they'll use the entire 30 minutes. It's just this tradition we have. Well, that's what all that commotion was about when I left the studio. I was wondering. People waving their arms at me, people calling my name. I just thought they liked the show. <laughs> I'm sorry, though, it's stupid of me to make a mistake like that. <laughs> me, of all people. Of all people? You of no people. <laughs> hey, man, does Lou seem upset to you? Dad, you can't just stop six minutes early. But don't worry about it. Tomorrow I'll go six minutes longer. <laughs> hi, group. Hey, hi, Rhoda. Hi, Rhoda. Gosh, I'm a little early, aren't I, Mayor? No, that's okay. Hey, Mer, the kid's taking me to a farewell dinner tonight. Oh, yeah, that's right. Tomorrow's the big day, the big move, huh? He's not going. Mary. Yeah, Mer, tomorrow. Hello, Rhoda. In honor of the occasion, here's a little something I got you. Oh, Murray, this is so sweet. Well, I hope you like it. Uh, Mary told me you had to give up your pets, so... <laughs> oh, how darling, a little enamel goldfish. Oh, it's adorable. Oh, it looks just like goldfish. <gasps> it isn't a death mask or anything, is it? I just love it, Murray. Really thoughtful. Thank you. You're welcome. It's from both of us. What? Uh, thanks. Okay, sport, that little remark's gonna cost you four bucks. What? Four bucks for that cheap little thing? Look, look oh. what I got from Murray. And, uh, sort of Ted. <laughs> for my going away. Oh, right. Yeah, Lou. Yeah. So, you're leaving Minneapolis. Yeah, right. Tomorrow. Where is it you're going? Oh, I'm going to New York. I guess your parents will be sorry to see you go. No, Lou, my parents live in New York. I guess your parents will be happy to see you come. <laughs> uh, I'll go in on that ceramic thing she's got on. Oh, no, Lou, you don't have to do that. No, I want to, Murray. That bird thing or whatever it is. <laughs> How much does that come to? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Eight dollars split three ways is... Uh... Now, wait a minute. If it's split... Two ways, it's four. If it's split four ways, it's two. Yeah. So if it's split three Look, ways, uh, it's... split it four ways, it's simple. I'll go in on it. Oh. You can't go in on it. You're the one who's going away. Yeah, that's right. Hey, you really are, aren't you? 
You're going away. Well, if Rhoda's not going to chip in, neither am I. Uh, hey, how about some more wine? Yeah, sure. Good. Uh, I don't know if I should have any more of this stuff. Why not? Mm, I'm afraid of getting sloppy and sentimental, you know. It's like leaving you know, Mary. Really... I'm sort of emotional. Now, nah, I don't want to start. Rhoda, I feel emotional about please, it, Please, Mary, please, let's not get into it. Now, point one, we've been, uh, you know, friends, okay? So point two, friends are supposed to miss each other. Therefore, point three, I will miss you. Okay? Right? Okay. Right. Good. Hmm. Hey, modest little wine. But I think you will be amused by its presumption. <laughs> An unassuming little wine, but I believe it will stain permanently if you spill it on your dress. <laughs> An elegant little wine. Mary, you're the best friend I ever had. I don't know what I would have done without you. Oh, no, I'm going to miss you so much. I mean, you just don't know. I'm really going to miss you. Mary. I just knocked my salad on the floor. <laughs> no, I heard. Mary, will you remember what I said before I knocked my salad over? Yeah, well, will. you remember what I said? Oh, yeah. <sighs> so, about your visiting me in New York. What do you think? Next weekend too soon? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mary. You know, something's just occurring to me. Tomorrow morning, I will be leaving Minneapolis. Which, strange as it sounds, is my home, where my friends are. To go to New York, where my friends aren't. Well, the only two people I know anymore are my, my parents, which is another story entirely. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I guess so, right. Also, Mary, I am leaving an apartment that I just love. It's taken me four years to fix up and get perfect, even though there's still a lot wrong. <laughs> to go live in a smaller, more expensive apartment, which even if I find, I will have to decorate from scratch, right? Say right. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Mary, what you've been saying all along. I think it's true. What ha have I been saying all along? I'm not leaving. Rhoda. You gave up your apartment, your job, no, your car. Mary, do not try to talk me out of it. I'm staying. <laughs> talk you out of it, Rhoda? I think that's terrific. Oh, Mary, I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the matter, kid? <clears throat> huh? Well, uh, there are 17 people hiding in my apartment. For what? <laughs> For your going away party. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I've been going crazy worrying about it. <laughs> See, I'm the other window dresser there. There are six windows, so now instead of decorating three, I'll have to do six. <laughs> Man, it'd uh, be hard to dress six, huh? Oh, yes. I'm afraid I'd run out of things to say. Uh, hey, everybody, now, it's almost 8.30. Rhoda will be here in a minute. Uh, now, I think we should all hide. Oh, hide. <laughs> yeah, you know, just so we can all yell surprise and like that. Hey, fella, mm. is the crouching on or off here? I don't crouch. <laughs> uh, let's see, where shall I hide? Oh. Oh, excuse me. You may possibly recognize me. I'm Ted Factor. Anchorman, uh, WGM Six O'Clock News. Oh, terrific! Are you covering this? <laughs> hey, here. Me too. I'm not an expert or anything, but shouldn't the lights be out? Uh, somebody get the lights. Good point. So, Rhoda, why don't you come on in and we'll have a cup of coffee? 
Fluffy. my trees before I move in next week. Oh, hey, Barry. I was meaning to call you hey, in the morning. Hey, this place swing like this all the time? Well... I'm gonna love living here. Oh, uh, why don't you uh, come in and have a drink, and we'll talk about just that. Right on. Uh, Georgette, will you get Barry a martini? I'd be happy to. Hi there, Barry Barlow. I love your beads. <laughs> Gee, Rhoda, I'm glad you decided to stay. Oh, Murray, you are so sweet. <laughs> hey, I think it's terrific that you guys came. I'm glad you're staying around, Rhoda. Thanks, guys. Well, Rhoda, so you're off to New York. <laughs> right, Ted. Well, may I wish you bon voyage? You know, good voyage. Yeah. Ted, Rhoda is not going to New York. She's staying in Minneapolis. That's what she just told us. Is that what she said? Mm -hmm. And everybody knew? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at me. The cheese stands alone. <laughs> so, Mary, uh, how's married life treating you? Oh, uh, fine. Just, just fine. I thought you'd be on your honeymoon. Oh, well, we're, we're leaving uh, right after the party. Mm -hmm. Where's the old bridegroom? Uh, right, right here. Uh, Barry, Barlow, I'd like you to meet my person that you were asking about. Hi there. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine, but I can see you're doing a little better. Married to a knockout like your wife. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know if she's a knockout, but I like her. Where'd you meet her? We're old friends. If you hadn't have married her, I just might have. I uh, see, Mr. Huh? Uh, Lord, why, why don't we freshen your drink? Huh? How does he know we eat? Uh, he's in shoes. Shoes? Oh. Hey, group, listen, these presents. Since I'm not going away, I hope they're all things you can use, because I'm giving every one of them back. Oh, no. Aren't you going to open them just to see? No, I... I would open them, Rhoda, just to see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Georgette. <laughs> so we prevent anyone from dying of curiosity. Uh, let's open them just to see what my haul would have been. I'll uh, read the card so everyone can hear. <laughs> it is terrific he's going to read. <laughs> I just love his voice. Quiet, everybody. He's going to read. <laughs> <clears throat> This is Ted Baxter bringing you the six o'clock gift card. <gasps> love gorgeous. Love Georgette. But I love the way you say it anyway. <laughs> hey, look, everybody. Oh, oh, Georgette, it's just gorgeous, really. Thank you. It's just what I would have wanted. <laughs> you keep it as a memento, Rhoda. Oh, okay. Here, read another one. Mr. Baxter. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, for those of you who can't see, I'll describe it to you. Got a little doggy coming out of a little dog house. I think that's a mommy and daddy dog. Ted. From Rob. Oh, yeah, that's from me. I hope you like it. Terrific. A date book. 
Too bad it's not filled. Oh, oh no, no. No, uh, Ted, that, that card's for me, and I, I really Everybody wish... Everybody else is it. having their card read, Mary. Well, it's... <clears throat> Dear Rhoda, what do you get for your best friend at a time like this? I went out and bought three different things and took them all back. Just doesn't make any sense to buy some dumb gift that can never convey what you really feel, love, Mary. Oh. Hey. Boy, talk about your cheapos. <laughs> I'm an animal lover myself. Do you know where I could get one just like that? Well, actually, I think it would be pretty hard to find one that wasn't just like that. <laughs> if you like it, Georgette, I'll give you the pick of the litter. You mean it? Promise. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. I'll be leaving in a minute. Mary? Yes, Jeff. I, uh, I'll be coming in late tomorrow. Okay. Well, don't you want to know why I'll be coming in late? Well, no, it doesn't make any difference. Because I met a little girl right here in this room tonight. I don't know if you know it's the sparse flying, but, uh, that's, uh, why I'm not coming in early tomorrow. Right. I mean, if anybody wants to know why I'm not coming in early, you explain to them exactly what happened here. Uh, Ted, um... Georgette just got in her car and drove... Where are you off to, Mayor? Oh, just running down to the Civic Center to go through some records. Oh, hey, while you're there, could you pick up the new Montevati album? <laughs> Ted, these are other kinds of records. See, I'm doing some research. Oh, well, in that case, forget about the Montevati. Besides, I can pick one up anyway. There's a little record store in my neighborhood. I'm there all the time. Beats buying them and taking them home, right, Ted? <laughs> I'm learning a language. English? <laughs> Swedish. We've got a great 12 lesson album. Why Swedish, Ted? Well, here in Minneapolis, there are a lot of people of the Swedish persuasion. <laughs> uh, do a lot of personal appearances. Never hurts to have a second language. Ted, you don't have a first language. <laughs> see you guys in the morning. Bye, Mayor. A juicy longer. Kill it, see us, Mary. <laughs> Mary! Oh. Hey, it's great to see you. Oh, what, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just uh, doing a little research on a story. Uh, I'm getting a fishing license for my boss. What about you? Well, I'm getting a license, too. Oh, fishing? No. Marriage. Oh! Well... Gee, congratulations, Dan. Uh, who are you marrying? Her. Uh, Mary Richards, I'd like you to meet Judy Conrad. Uh, uh, Mary and her friend Rhoda took my journalism class last year. Oh, and he was a wonderful teacher. <laughs> Gee, has it been a year already? Yeah. You, uh, are you still living in the same place? Yeah, I am. Are you? You still have that great little apartment? Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, we dated a little. I mean, it was nothing serious. <laughs> he only gave me a C. A C plus. <laughs> You still teaching? Yeah, you still at WJM? Yeah, still there. Mr. Grant's still there. Murray's still there. And, uh, Ted? Yeah, Ted is still there. <laughs> Excuse me, is this death certificates? Uh, that's... No, this is motor vehicle registration. Oh, that'll do. We're having our engagement party on Saturday. Why don't you come and bring Rhoda, too? Yes, please come. I'd love to see you. I mean, we'd love to see you, wouldn't we, Judy? <laughs> love it. God, God, this thing. Daddy, why are you putting yourself through all of this? Honey, I just don't like the idea of you being up here alone with a lock that any burglar can slip in five seconds. I just hate to see you getting yourself so aggravated. Dear, when you're retired, aggravation is about all the fun you have. Hello, <laughs> oh, Dr. Richard. Hey, Rhoda, how are you? Fine. Hiya, ma'am. You ready? Just a second. Good. Tell 
me, when you were a surgeon and a heart didn't quite fit, did you ever have to... <laughs> well said. Good, man. Hey, tell me again why we're going to an engagement party for a guy you used to go with, but who is now marrying someone else. Because he's a nice guy, a friend. He asked us, and there's no reason not to. Now tell me about her. Is she young? Yes, young. How young? I don't know, 16 or 25. <laughs> yeah, I blur in there, too. They <laughs> seem like a very nice couple. Well, I'd say it's a very insecure relationship. Mary, girls who need big engagement parties are very insecure. I ought to know. I used to have them myself. Without a fiance. <laughs> Conrad House? Yes, won't you come in? Thank you. I'm uh, Judy's uh, father. Oh, hello. I'm Mary Richards, and this is Rhoda Morgenstern. Hi, sir. Oh, well, you're uh, just in time for the toast. Oh. <laughs> you hear that, Mayor? We're just in time for the toast. I thought you said she wasn't going to come. No, I, I said she might not come. Well, she's here. <sighs> oh, uh... Hi. Hi, Hi, Mary. Hi, Rhoda. Hiya, Dan. Oh, you're looking good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so are you. Uh, this is uh, another ex-pupil of mine, Rhoda Morgenstern. Is my fiancée, Judy Conrad. Hello. It's not like with Mary. I just took a course from him. Hi, <laughs> uh, Judy. It's just a joke. <laughs> Okay, it's true, but it's also a joke. I mean, you know, your parents have a lovely home. It's just lovely. Thank you. Uh, Dan, I want you to meet Millie and Frank. They just got here. Okay, in a minute. Well, I'll be over there whenever you're finished. Well, we just uh, stopped in to say hello. We really have to be going. Oh, no, please, please, don't, don't, don't leave. Uh, Judy's just a little nervous about the party. Now, there's some really interesting people here. Yeah, hiya, Dan. And this isn't one of them. <laughs> now, this is my best man, Jonas Slasser. What is it about you that suddenly made me want to come over and say hello? Dan, can you come here a minute, please? Hey, uh, 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 go ahead, Dan. I'll, uh, I'll handle this. Uh, excuse me. Hi, uh, Rhoda Morgenstern, Janice. Oh. I'm Mary Richards. Oh, you're the one they've been fighting about. <laughs> uh, Rhoda, I think we put in enough of an appearance. Uh, let's go. Oh, okay. don't, don't go. How can you leave now? This is so exciting. Exciting? Yeah, well, it, it is to me. You see, I, I teach paleontology. Oh, yeah, yeah birds. Yeah, no, fossils. <laughs> bones, mostly bones. That's the same thing day in and day out. Dead stuff. <laughs> this, uh, this is life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, live stuff. Rhoda, I really think we ought to leave. Okay. Uh, can I get you something to eat? Yeah, I'd really love it. Mary, let's just have a bite to eat, huh? Well, I'll be waiting for you here by the door. Uh, Rhoda, has anyone ever told you you have very nice bones? <laughs> oh, yeah. I came already assembled. <laughs> Mary, you, you haven't got a drink. Oh. Come on. Well. Gee, it's, uh, it's nice to see you again. You really look terrific. Thank you. Uh, we used to have some good times, didn't we? Yes, we did. How come we stopped seeing each other? Oh, I don't know. You, you went your way, I went my way, and here we are. And here's Judy. <laughs> Dan, I told you I wanted you to meet Millie and Frank. Oh, I just did. No, that was Iris and Paul. Oh, they seemed like Millie and Frank. <laughs> well, come meet Millie and Frank. Uh, in a minute. Dan, I would like you to help me get something in the den. W what do you want in the den? Just something in the den. Uh, Mary, excuse me a minute. I've got to get something in the den. <laughs> You want, it, you want it on the rocks? Uh, no, with some water. Thanks, gentlemen. Rhoda, I think we have put in more than an appearance. Okay, Mia, we'll, we'll leave just as soon as I finish eating. Dan, I told you I didn't want her here, and now I want your friend Mary to go. Judy, this is ridiculous. The only reason I invited her is because Mary is an old friend. Who's Mary? <laughs> Are you ready to go? Who's Mary? Uh, what do you say we go, Alice? <laughs> Why anyone would invite an old girlfriend to my engagement party?
party if he wasn't still interested in her. Which one is she? Look, uh, Judy, this doesn't seem the time to no, be discussing exactly something like this. No, it is the time. I want this settled now. Excuse well, me, does somebody uh, here have a blue station wagon? It's parked in front of my car, car, and I, I can't... Well, it do you means have that a maybe blue we made a big mistake. Dan, where are you going? Me, I mean, do you have, deal with it? Do you have a blue with it. station wagon? It's parked... <laughs> Mary, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, you're Mary. Oh, so nice to meet you, dear. I've heard so much about you. You know, it's really nice spending an evening at home for a change. Yeah, it must be really great not to have to worry. Where is Dan taking me tonight? To the theater? To the movies? To a cozy little French restaurant? That sort of stuff can drive a person crazy. <laughs> It's not having dinner in a French restaurant that bothers me. It's having dinner with his parents. You've had dinner with his parents already? Yeah, four times in the last three weeks. <laughs> had to keep going back till you finish the roast, right? <laughs> you know where Dan is tonight? This is the first night this week that Dan and I haven't gone out. He is at a basketball game with my father. Well, aren't you glad they uh, get along so well, Mayor? Oh, yeah, everybody gets along just great. Dan and Dad are the best of pals. <laughs> Dan's folks love me. I love his folks. His folks love my folks. My folks love his <laughs> folks. I think Dan's the greatest guy I've ever known. There's just one problem. I think he's gonna ask me to marry him. What's the very least you could do after you busted up his engagement? Rhoda! I did not bust up his engagement. I know, I know that, kid. What's wrong? Don't you love him? Yeah, I, I do. Maybe. I don't know. I need time. Well, the guy obviously loves you, Mayor. <sighs> well, he's said so a couple of times, but, you know, he must have said so to Judy. <laughs> and he couldn't have loved her that much. I don't know. I think he's just in a mood to get married, you know? And well, if he is, I don't want to encourage him because I'm not. I mean, not right now, anyway. I don't, I don't think. But I might, you know? Who knows? I know. You do? Sure. You do, but you don't, but you might, right? Right. Oh, I have to meet Jonas in half an hour. Where are you going? He's taking me to dinner tonight. Well, that ought to be fun. Well, Mary, going to dinner with a paleontologist can get very embarrassing. <laughs> Last restaurant we were in, he started reconstructing the bones of his duck. <laughs> Good afternoon, Murray. Hi, Ted. You're hungry. <laughs> your school of you had it board for four. We all be am not done. Your school of you are clipping. <laughs> Nate, heck, he need hard work, hmm? <laughs> Darn batteries. Yours or its? <laughs> if you can move your lips to a type of Walter Cronkite, you just might have something. Where is she? Mary, you only have one hour for lunch. I know, Mr. Grant, and I'm sorry. But if you need two hours, that's okay. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Hi, Lou. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hi, Tom. <laughs> How you doing? I'm terrific. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Say, I've been mean to ask you, when are you going to come by and lecture yeah. to my class again? Uh, sorry, Dan, I can't. Why not? Well, uh, because the uh, reason is... Uh, I hate that stuff. Oh. Uh, I'll uh, speak to your class. <laughs> you teach at the university, right? That's right. Television journalism. I'd be glad to do it. How much does it pay? <laughs> well, all of our guest lecturers work for nothing. Oh. Well, it's wonderful, isn't it? So many people are willing to give of their time. <laughs> <laughs> He's really one of a kind, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. The only trouble is we haven't figured out what kind yet. <laughs> I'll see you tonight, Mary. Right. Thanks for lunch. Okay. So long, though, Murray. So long. Drop by any time, Dan. Any time at all. Thanks. I will. Bye. <laughs> He's a heck.
heck of a guy. <laughs> yeah, he really is. You don't find guys like that every day. Look, I know, I know that he's a nice guy. I just don't need to be told all the time, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Can I see you in my office for a minute? You want to talk about it? Not really. Too personal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we've talked about things that were kind of personal to me, and it helped. I thought I could return the favor. Maybe you're right, Good. Mr. Grant. It, it's just that everybody seems to think that Dan is a great guy. Yeah. I mean, you do. Yeah. Murray does. Mm -hmm. My mother does. My father <laughs> does. Everybody does think that Dan is a great guy. And I think that he's going to ask me to marry him. Yeah. But I don't <laughs> know if I... What? Look, uh, if you don't want to talk about it, uh, that's okay. No. no, I think, really, that it's probably better if I do. Well, are you sure? Because this sounds awfully personal. Well, I know it is, yeah. but... Uh, how about your father? He's probably a good person to talk to. No, he's too close to Dan to be objective. Uh, I kind yeah. of... Mr. Payne, it just seems like I... Like something's missing. Uh, uh, Mary, Mary, Mary. What? I don't know. I'm just stalling for time. <laughs> uh, Mary, you're over 30. If you're looking for that head over heels thing, that could be a long wait. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, the, 24 years ago, uh, when I was working as a stringer on the AP, Edie didn't want to marry me either. We had different interests. She didn't like baseball. <laughs> and she said she wasn't sure she loved me either. But I pressed her. And she married me. And over the years, she came to love me. <laughs> and last year, she learned the strike zone. <laughs> anyway, all, all I'm trying to say is, uh, head over heels may never happen. Mr. Grant? Mm -hmm. Are you head over heels in love with Edie now? Uh... Kind of. Thanks for our talk. Oh, yeah, uh, any time. See? Uh, I was a big elf, wasn't I? And, you know, it may be that Dan won't ask me to marry him, mm -hmm. and then I won't have any problem at all. Right, right. But I know he's going to ask me. <laughs> What's the matter? He doesn't want to turn. You sure you got the right key? Yeah, it's the one my father gave me for his latest lock. <laughs> Let me try. You know, if you had a man around here, you wouldn't have these problems. I do have a man around here. That's why I'm having these problems. <laughs> my father! Oh, <laughs> he's really a great guy. Yeah, he is. I just wish he wouldn't worry about me so much. Well, I, um, I can't blame him. I mean, I guess he, uh, he won't stop worrying until you get married. Oh, why, why don't I, uh, see if I can't get that key to turn? Okay, just doesn't want to open. Mary, why don't you want to talk about us? Okay. Okay, let's, um, let's talk. you'd start. Well, let's see. How do you, uh, 
How do you open up a subject like this? Uh, you want to get married? Boy, that really opens it right up, doesn't it? <laughs> well? Dan, I know what I'm going to say may sound a little, you know, negative, but, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, what? why are we laughing? Well, we're laughing because we know it's not a real no. <laughs> how, how do we know that? Well, uh, we, we uh, know that you said that because you're scared to make a commitment. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm yes, not. you are. No, I admit that back when I thought that someday I, you know, had to get married, that it would have scared me. But now that I know I don't have to get married, it doesn't scare me. Oh. Then why did you say no? Dan, it's not that I don't care for you. Chinese food! Uh, wait, don't tell me. Your father finally found a foolproof lock. Right. <laughs> Hi, Jonas. Hi, Mary. Uh, guess what we have in here? Yeah, Chinese Ch food. Right. We heard you. Uh, listen, Rhoda, when you get upstairs, would you call my father and see if he can come over and let us in? Well, come on up with us and we'll all have Chinese food. Why are you so excited about Chinese food? Well, you never had it before. <laughs> Oh. Can you believe this? A man who has never had Chinese food in his whole life? Listen, Rod, I owe you a lot. You're opening up a whole new world for me. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, what, what did you say that was again? An egg roll. <laughs> Macho. Oh. Excuse me, Dan. An egg roll. <laughs> I, um, I believe you were saying something about no. Boy... Dan, it's not that I don't care for you a lot. Mary, I, I don't get it. I mean, we're, we're very compatible. We're both mature. We have a lot of the same interests. We both like music. And we both hate anchovies. I mean, what else do we need? Time. Dan, what would you say if I said I just wanted to wait a little while? Well, I'm ready now. No, yeah, but Dan, I'm not. I mean, I've been thinking about this all week long, and... I figure that if I have to think about it, that I'm not ready, you know? No, I, I don't understand. There you go. Because... Lychee chicken. Also, uh, pork fried rice and uh, Chinese pea pods with water chestnuts. Yeah, and, and egg roll. Oh, Jonas, I don't think they want lychee chicken. Oh, uh, just eat the rest of the stuff then. Uh, do you know how to use chopsticks? Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Jonas. Jonas. Rhoda's going to teach me. Yeah, right now, Jonas. Yeah. Come on. Well, I guess we've said it all. Goodbye, Mary. It's been a lot of fun. Dan! What? Don't go. I mean, just because I said I don't want to marry you right now doesn't mean we have to stop seeing each other, does it? Well, it's, it's kind of a waste of time, isn't it? Is it a waste of time when two people like each other and hate anchovies? Look, all, all I know is I'm ready to get married. No. I mean, I'm really ready. I mean, I don't know how long I can last. I don't know either, but I do know something. I know that you are not going to leave me alone with two plates of lychee chicken. What about Rhoda? You think she's ready? Oh. Hi, Walt. Hi, Dad. Oh, hi. What uh, seems to be the trouble here? Uh, the lock doesn't work. Oh, the lock works. Look. It's this damn key that doesn't work. <laughs> you know, if you'd hurry up and ask her to marry you, I wouldn't have to worry about locks. I did ask her to marry me. You did? Oh, wonderful. Congratulations. Honey, I'm so happy for you. Now, uh, Walter, mm. she said no. Oh? Well, she knows you better than I do. <laughs> Annie, 
Anyway, I think Dan and I finally have a pretty good understanding. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Mayor. Mm -hmm. You know something, though? I think he was surprised to find out that I am not living my life in a constant search for the right man to marry. You know something? I was pretty surprised to find that out myself. I know. There was a time when I went to bed every night thinking, well, there goes another day not married. Now, I just wait till New Year's Eve and think, there goes another year not married. <laughs> Mary, I tell you, it's progress. <laughs> hey. Hey, Philly. A little hand wrestling for a drink? You're on. <laughs> oh, Philly. One of these days, I'm going to take you. It's all in knowing how, Lou. I know. I know. Hey, bartender, a scotch for my friend Philly. Thanks, Lou. And one for myself. Mary? Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Grant. I don't arm wrestle. <laughs> anyway, we've got all that work to do tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, Philly? Hmm? This is Mary Richards, my associate producer. Hi. Philly is one of our more legendary habitués. I figure you only go around once in life, so you might as well go around smash. Here you are. Uh, new bartender, huh? Hmm? Mm -hmm. No, he's only temporary until McCluskey's widow can find a buyer for the place. Oh, yeah, that's right. I missed McCluskey's wake, didn't I? Well, we've been working late every you night. You didn't miss the wake, Lou. Huh? This is it. <laughs> Where's McCluskey? In the back room. He's here. <laughs> you ought to go back and say hello, Lou. <laughs> he looks terrific. <laughs> A picture of health. <laughs> You want to go back with me, Mary? Oh, uh, gosh, uh, Mr. Grant, I didn't you know, really know him. Well, if you don't get to know him now, you never will. <laughs> I'll go back after dinner. Let's sit down, Mary. What's a special night, Philly? I'm sorry, Lou. The kitchen's closed. What time to close? Three years ago. <laughs> Five minutes. I guess we better try someplace else. Oh, don't leave. You sit here and I'll fix something up. There's always something to eat around here. Thanks, Philly. Nice guy, Philly. And strong for a little guy. Huh? You mean that arm wrestling? Oh, he knows I can take him at that. It's a little thing we go through so I can buy him a free drink. Isn't this a great place? Mm -hmm. I'd give anything to own a place like this. It's a gold mine. Well, didn't Philly say it was for sale? Yeah. I wonder how much they want for it. No, it's crazy. <laughs> Why is it crazy? Oh, me owning a bar is ridiculous. I don't know. If you want something in life, you ought to go out and try to get it. Well, it's like Philly says. You only go around once in life. <laughs> I tell you something. Come on, old oh boy. I was up all last night thinking about it, and this morning I called McCluskey's widow. She's got another buyer, but she's willing to sell the place to me for old time's sake if I call back by 10 o'clock. What do you think? Oh, Mr. Grant, I uh, think yeah. you should. And I only need $10,000. <laughs> and I almost have it right here. 6000 in my savings account. 2000 in Edie's savings account and $500 in my grandchildren's piggy bank. <laughs> I'm giving them a piece of the place. Well, then, uh, what you need is $1,500, right? That's all. That's all. Mary. <laughs> you wouldn't, by any chance, happen to... Oh, uh, no, I Mr. mean, Grant, a thrifty I... girl like you, I bet you have, oh, say, three, four thousand dollars oh, all the way to your bank account. A, a few hundred. How many hundred? <laughs> Not many hundred. Look at your raise. Mr. Grant, if I had the money, I... We can I'd borrow on your insurance. <laughs> Murray. What is it, Lou? Murray. I've decided to buy McCluskey's bar. No kidding. Ah. Why? <laughs> because it's a gold mine, that's why. 
but I seem to have come up a little short on the down payment. Sorry, Lou, I've already invested my money this year in children's shoes. <laughs> this is a once-in-a-lifetime deal. A bar is a risky thing, Lou. Murray, Murray. I've known banks who have lent money to guys who wanted to open bars, and the only collateral they had was that I was going to drink there. <laughs> Sorry, Lou. Hi, guys. Ted! Lou? No. Mary, call Dr. Ames. He's always looking for a smart investment. No what? Now Lou's looking for a partner to invest in a bar he's buying. You know, I've always wanted to own a place of my own. Ted Baxter's newsroom. It's one of my five ambitions in life. I don't want to know what the other four are. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you. Make a million dollars, replace Walter Cronkite, learn how to swim, and marry Marlo Thomas. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ames is with a patient. Why is it you can never get a doctor when you need one? Say, Lou, I'll go into that bar place with you. No, thanks, Ted. Oh, come on, Lou. Ted, I'm talking about buying a bar, not a raffle ticket. I need 1,500 bucks. Oh. Newsroom. Oh, uh, uh, just a moment, please. Mr. Grant, it's Mrs. McCluskey. Uh, tell her I'll call her right back. Uh, can he call you right back? Thank you very much. Uh, Mary, try Dr. Ames again. Uh, what's the total asking price, Lou? 85. Net income after taxes? 15. Encumbrances of record? None. Interest per annum? Five and a half percent. Will you take cash? <laughs> cash? Five hundred. One thousand. Fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, don't you think we ought to sign something first? <laughs> All right. Let's step into my office. Uh, just a minute. I'll go to my room and get my lucky pen. Why does he carry $500 bills around in his wallet? You want to know why? Say, Ted, uh, do you have the $3 you borrowed from me at lunch last week? Oh, sure, Murr. You got change for a $500? <laughs> Say, Lou, I've got an idea how we can make a lot of money. See, there's this bar on 3rd Street, and it's packed every night. And I figured out why, Lou. They've got the cutest bartenders you ever saw. Ted, I am not hiring barmaids. Oh, no, these aren't barmaids, Lou. These are good-looking guys. <laughs> I guess they do that to get the women to come into the place. Come to think of it, there weren't any women in the place. <laughs> Everybody there was a good-looking guy. Ted, I am not turning this kind of bar into that kind of bar. You mean it's that kind of bar, Lou? Yes, Ted, that was what that was. <clears throat> Lucky I didn't go in there. Frilly! Hey, Lou. How you doing? You want it for a drink? Come on. Oh. <laughs> Philly, one of these days I'm going to take you. John? Yep. A scotch for my friend here. Thanks, Lou. You want to try it? Well, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel his drink. <laughs> hey, get hey, hey, her there. Hi. Congratulations. Hi. Here you go, Lou. Uh, Thank you. It's a little gift for Mary and me for opening night. Rosie picked it out. <laughs> I know you're supposed to give flowers on opening night, but I figured with a cactus, everybody get really thirsty looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck, Lou. Hey, 
That's pretty cute. Giving a bottle of scotch to the owner of a bar. <laughs> Anybody want a drink? Sure. Oh, boy, you sure have a great place here, Mr. Grant. Thanks. Okay. That'll be 85 cents. <laughs> <laughs> say we all sit down over here at my private table. Great. Sean, let's have that champagne. Champagne? Hi, Mr. Baxter. Oh, there you are. I've been waiting for you. You ready? All set to go. Great. Oh, look, do you believe this? I bet he misses. <laughs> it's different, Mr. Grant. Did you change anything? Well, not too much. Uh, had the beer company send over a new waterfall. And we moved McCluskey out. Hello, <laughs> uh, uh, we have a little conference. What is it, Ted? It's a little business that we as partners should have, you know? <laughs> Be right back. All right, Ted, what do you want? Lou, I'm not paying for that champagne. <laughs> Ted, we're both paying for it. It was coming out of your end, Lou. Ted, I don't want to discuss it. We're both paying for it. I'll tell you what, Lou. Let's arm wrestle for it. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> you run. Mr. and Mrs. Twin Cities, the way to end the Cold War is very simple. Let Russia take their toughest guy, and let China take their toughest guy, and the United States take their toughest guy, and let them put the gloves on and fight it out in the ring. Winner take all. <laughs> this is Ted Baxter with one man's opinion. <laughs> Do you approve of that? I don't think Mr. Grant cares what Ted does, as long as he stops begging for his money back. Oh, business still pretty bad, huh? Oh, Murray, it's depressing. I was in there the other night with a date, and Mr. Grant was so glad to see us. It was just sad. I mean, nobody came in for hours. Yeah. Lou's been dragging me in there every night after work. I think I'm developing a drinking problem. <laughs> but tonight, I am going straight home. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, you want to know why I look so bad? I'm worried about my mother. <laughs> She's in jail, Lou. And I've got to get an attorney to get her out. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask for my $1,500 back, Lou. What's she in for, Ted? Uh, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> no, Ted. All right, Lou. I'll tell you the truth. It wasn't Grand Theft Auto. I just didn't want to come out and say it. I just got back from the doctor. <laughs> I've only got a year to live. <laughs> of course, there's one in a million chance that they can save me. But it'll mean an awful lot of money, Lou. No, Ted. All right, all right, all right. All right, I'll tell you the real truth. I don't have a year to live. <laughs> I've only got six months to live. <laughs> Ted? Yellow. Yeah, I think you have less than that if you don't get out of here right now. <laughs> Yeah, it was really pretty interesting there. Sort of the intellectual type, you know? The yeah. steel rim glasses and wild looking hair and very long sideburns. They began here, went all the way down his face, came out his cuffs. <laughs> Who is it? Mary in there. Yes, she is. Mr. Grant? Yeah. What are you doing here? May I come in? Sure, Lou. My beads are always open. Uh, I'm glad I found you. I've been walking around thinking about this bar thing. I think I finally hit on something. 
Uh, can we get out of your bedroom and go into the living room? This is it, Lou. <laughs> this is it? Yeah. Cute. <laughs> Mr. Grant, why don't you sit down and uh, how about a cup of coffee? Uh, sure, You have wouldn't uh, have anything a little stronger, huh? No. Oh, wait, I have some wine my mother sent me. Manischewitz elderberry, Manischewitz Concord grape. Manischewitz Blackberry? Yeah. Sort of a starter set for Sacramento winos. Mary? Rhoda? Yeah? It's so depressing at my bar. Oh, Mr. Grant, it is not. I finally realized what McCluskey's needs to be successful. What? McCluskey. So why don't you get him back? Well, no, Rhoda, <clears throat> Mr. McCluskey is no longer with us. And neither are his customers. <laughs> They're at all the other saloons all over town. And that's because they loved McCluskey. And they don't love me. Oh, sure they do. Yeah, of course they love you, Lou. No, no, no. McCluskey had a gift for people. He knew how to... Tell him jokes. He knew how to get him to sing. He remembered the names of everyone who came into that bar. You had to love him. And Mary, I'm not what you would call a lovable person. Oh, Mr. Grant, yes, you... Rhoda, isn't he lovable? Yeah, truly lovable. <laughs> Thank you. The thing is... I, I never really cared about being lovable till now. It was always enough that people were afraid of me. <laughs> but from now on, things are gonna be entirely different. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to be incredibly lovable. Uh, how are you gonna do that? <laughs> Be our loop? Right. I'm gonna see to it that this place is exactly like it was when McCluskey owned it. I put up posters, sent out flyers. Oh, how are you? How are you? I'd like to welcome you here this evening. I'm the owner. My name's Lou Grant. And yours? Al Bollinger. Al. Tim Kellogg. Tim. Well, 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 I'm certainly glad you could make it. Al and Tim. Al and Tim. <laughs> you gentlemen play darts? We just came in for a drink. Ah, ah, have a seat, have a seat. Hey, Al and Tim, I heard a pretty funny story today. Did you hear, oh, excuse me, Al and Tim, I'll finish the story later. It's really funny, I think you'll like it. Come right in, come right in. How are you, how are you? I'd like to welcome you to here this evening. I'm the owner, my name's Lou Grant. And yours? Rick Simmons. Rick, good to see you. Have a seat, have a seat. And yours, sir? Uh, Henry Tom. Henry, Henry, pleased to see you. And yours, young lady? Alice Howard. Alice, how are you? Betty Dotson. Betty, so nice to see you. Oh, well, well, I'm certainly glad you all could make it. Al and Tim? This is Rick, Henry, Alice, and, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Uh, Barbara. Betty. Betty. I was teasing you. <laughs> Say, Al and Tim, I'm going to tell that story now. Say, I was just going to tell Al and Tim this very funny story I heard today. Uh, maybe you've heard it. Listen, this drunk walks up to the parking meter and he puts a penny in it. And he looks at it and he says, hey, look. I just wait 12 minutes. <laughs> Great, yeah. You like that one, huh? Well, I'm going to go learn another one. <laughs> hey, oh, look who's here, everybody. Mary and Rhoda. Mary and Rhoda. <laughs> this is, uh, wait, 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 wait. This is Alice. Right. Alice. And this is Betty. Huh? Betty. And this is, this is Alan Tim. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, you'll all be dropping in here a lot, so you'll all get to know each other. Are you all right, Mr. Grant? Am I all right? I'm terrific. We're really having a great time here. As a matter of fact, you're just in time for the sing-along. Sing-along? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, stand around the old bar, 
hoist a few, sing the old songs. Come on now, it'll be fun. I'll start, then you two join in. Then everybody else will just follow. Mr. Grant, you don't have to do Sorry. this. It isn't like you. Come on along. Come on along. Alexander's ragtime band. Come on and cheer. Come on and cheer. It's the best band in the land. Let's everybody sing. Come on along. Come on along. Let me take you by the hand Up to the man, up to the man Who's the leader of the band? And if you wanna hear the Swanee River play Rag time, come on and hear, come on and hear Rag time band! <laughs> What the hell's wrong with you anyway? <laughs> you just sit there like a bunch of clots. <laughs> now we asked you nicely to sing along. Huh? Now that's not too much, is it? To ask people to have a good time? Sit down! <laughs> Hour. We are all going to sit here and we are all going to sing along. Is that clear? Roger? Norman? Helen? Muriel? Jim and Al? All right. Let's go. And this time... I really want to hear it. <laughs> Come on along. Come on along. Alexander. Come on and cheer. Sorry about last night. Oh, Mr. Grant, that's all right. I wasn't myself. Hey, listen, I understand. Do you think any of the people you called this morning might buy McCluskey's? Yeah, I think I'll find a buyer out of one of them. A buyer? Does that mean I'll get my money back, Lou? Probably, Ted. When? Soon. Got a way to go, Lou. <laughs> Boy, I never thought I'd see that money again. Ted, uh, by the way, uh, you still owe me three bucks. Oh, sure, Mer. <clears throat> you got change for 500? As a matter of fact. <laughs> and all they had were these, and I didn't have time to look for others, so. Yes, Mr. Grant. Be right in. Before I say yes, tell me we're not going to bob for apples. <laughs> <laughs> they knew those cards were a mistake. What are you throwing a party for? Oh, just for fun. I've wanted to for a long time now, you know, to pay back all the parties I've been to. Mm, you never been to a party at our house. Oh, well, that's because you don't have parties. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh. Uh, we'll invite you the next time. Oh, no, that's okay, well, Mr. Grant. You see, Edie usually has mostly her friends over well, and... No, uh, really, Mr. Grant, you, no, you really, don't really, I want to invite well, you. okay, okay. So you'll come then? Yeah, sure, I will. Well, I don't know when we're going to have one. <laughs> Because huh? Hi, hi, Phyllis. Hi. Lou, I'd love to talk to you too, but I'm here to see Mary. 
Huh. <laughs> well, if, if I'm in the way, I could wait out on the window ledge. Sorry, excuse us. Yeah. Window ledge, he's such a cutie. Oh, <laughs> Phyllis, is something the matter? Oh, well, actually, I'm on my way to the airport, but uh, let's talk of other things. Uh, Mary, that is a nice dress for, for work. What are you going to change into when you get home from work tonight? Oh, I don't, I don't know, Phil. I might just live recklessly and uh, stay right in this one. <laughs> oh, no. What is this? No, that won't do at all. Mary, please change it. But you will be in about seven. Yeah, I, I think I will. Phyllis, look, this is an office. I can't just stand around and chat. i got a lot of work to do here. i got to get out my party invitations. Um, here's yours. Well, thank you. Oh, Lars will be at some, some big dermatologist bash. But could I bring somebody else? Yeah, sure. Who? Oh, Mary, ah, how you ferret things out. Well, I'll confess, I have a surprise. And I've been looking forward all week to your meeting this surprise. Oh. Okay, I'll say this much. The surprise is a person. My plan was to bring this person by your place tonight, just casually. Oh, that's right. Your brother is getting into town today. Who spoiled my surprise? Well, Phil, you told me four times. I spoiled my surprise. I guess. Oh, Mary, you'll adore him. He's just like me. <laughs> and Mary, wait till you hear him play. He's a musical genius. Yeah, you mentioned that. An absolute genius. He's a composer. Oh, what's he written? Uh, commercials. <laughs> Television commercials, where they uh, use large symphony orchestras. Uh, there's no question, you know, that if Bach were alive today, he would be doing television. That's what they say about Ted. <laughs> Phil, I am really looking forward to meeting your brother, but I have got to get back to work. Sure, okay. Well, we'll uh, pop by about seven. Then. Okay. I'll give you a chance to change out of that dress. Phil, what is wrong with this dress? Nothing. Oh, no, Mary. It's just that his favorite color is red. Mary, I don't want to push you two into each other's arms. <laughs> it's just that from the moment you moved into our building, I was thinking to myself, Ben would love Mary. And then, of course, you're both unmarried. Seems as if you've been saved for each other. Well, Phil, I'm not all that saved. <laughs> well, don't listen to me. I, I don't believe in trying to control things. If uh, Let it happen if it happens. If there be bells... Let there be bells. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Well, I don't know how to put it except Mary Richards, my dear friend and neighbor, and all round with it person. <laughs> this is my brother, Ben. Ben. This is Mary. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mary. Very nice to meet you, too, Ben. I knew it. I just had a feeling. <laughs> Won't you come in and sit down? Uh, Mary, if we're just barging in or interrupting a slightest, no, please say so. No, no, you're not barging in at all. Can I get you something? A cup of coffee or a drink? Oh, either. No, 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 no. We're really just perched here for a quick chat, and so you two can meet briefly. I see you don't have a piano. <laughs> Whenever Phyllis sees a piano, she always makes me play. I don't do that. Yeah, you do do that. No, Mother did that. I don't do that. You do that, too. Well, if I do do that, it's justified because you're a wonderful brother. <laughs> Mary, sometime before Ben leaves, you must come down and hear him play Shostakovich. He just played some for me, and Mary, I wept. Not at Shostakovich, of course, who was really kind of irritating, but <laughs> at the sheer genius of my brother, Ben. Ben, why don't you go look at Mary's view? Okay. Uh, may I look at your view? Uh, sure. Well, take a look at the view. <laughs> Isn't he everything I said he was? Yes, he certainly is. <gasps> when did you get a piano? Oh, uh, I rented it, but I don't want Ben to know. Just go right on out, Ben. <laughs> I just treat the piano casually, as if it had always been there. Lars, of course, keeps bumping into it and cursing. It's nice. The view. You're a TV producer, she tells me. No, oh, no, I'm an associate producer. Hey, I love to be spontaneous. 
Let's, Lars and I, and you two kids, go out to dinner to a concert. I made reservations at the Bit of Scandinavia, and I have four tickets for the symphony. Spontaneity is so much simpler when it's all planned out, isn't it? Well, what do you two say, Mary? Ben? Uh, well, uh, Phil, not tonight. You know, I'm afraid that old jet lag is getting to me. I, I'm really beat. I'd kind of like to just turn in early. Oh. Well, of course, Ben, it was just the most fleeting of thoughts. <laughs> and, and Mary'd probably just like to relax after a hard day's work. I said it was just the most fleeting of thoughts. <laughs> I am really kind of tired. Well, Mary, I'm so glad we had this little visit. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Don't worry, Mary, it was just a first impression. <laughs> Does that go for me, too? Oh, hi, Ben. Yeah, sure. Come on in. Sorry to barge in on you like this, but I got to thinking I might have seemed a little abrupt a little while ago. Oh? Well, you know, Phyllis has this way of uh, manipulating people, and I got the feeling she was backing you into a corner on the whole thing. I think she's very anxious to have us go out. <laughs> no, I think she's very anxious to have us get married. <laughs> hey, would you like some salad? Terrific. Good, I always make too much. Ah, oh, Phyllis would be so pleased to know that you and I are having dinner together after all. <laughs> Somehow I think she'd want to be here, you know, turning on the music, turning down the lights, turning down the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, you and Phyllis meet each other in college? No, no, it was after. Oh, I thought you could have been a freshman when she was a senior. Hey, are you trying to find out how old I am? <laughs> I guess so. I'm sorry. I hate it when people do that to me. I mean, why don't they come right out and ask? Exactly. You want to know something? Just ask it. Okay, how old are you? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I'm 32. Thanks. Have you also noticed that if people want to know if you're married, they never ask straight out? Oh, no. Hi, kid. Hi. I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a date. No, come on in. It's all right. Not a date. <laughs> Rhoda Morgenstern, I'd like you to meet Ben Sutherland. Rhoda lives in the apartment upstairs. Hi. Hiya, Ben. Uh, why don't you sit down? He married? <laughs> Gee, I'll have to remember that one. Oh, I knew it. Because Ben and I were talking about liking people who are direct. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> uh, Rhoda. <laughs> Why not show the man how direct a person I can be? Did I tell you that Ben is Phyllis's brother? You're kidding. Yeah. Phyllis is Ben? That's funny. Phyllis never mentioned you to me. Yeah, funny. <laughs> um, so what do you do, Ben? I'm a musician. Oh. I play the piano, compose a little. Are you interested in music? Not really. <laughs> hey, who's for coffee? Have you lived in Minneapolis long? Oh, a few years now. But I'm really from New York. No kidding. What part? Yes. The Bronx. Why does Manhattan never occur to anyone? That's where I live now. Oh, yeah? How come you moved here? Who knows? I, did you ever run out of gas unexpectedly at a strange corner and you kind of see a strange street lamp and a strange street sign? Then you wonder, how did I end up here? Something like that happened to me once, too. I was on a stall train. And, you know, nobody in the train expected to be delayed. Anyway, I looked at the window, and I saw this really oh, old... you know, I know exactly what you mean, Rhoda. House is what it was. It was an old house. How come you're not interested in music at all? Oh, listen, some music interests me. Classical music. Now, that really depresses me. <laughs> well, in that case, I guess you wouldn't want to go to a concert with me. Oh, wait, now, I didn't say that. I've gone for worse than that for a date. Mary and Mary. You know, Ben, there's still those two tickets to the concert tonight. Oh, yes, but I... No, wait, no, don't feel any obligation here. I really just thought that if you wanted to... Oh, you... oh Rhoda, look, I just happen to have two tickets to a Mozart concert tonight. Would you like to come along with me and uh, get depressed? <laughs> well, uh, can I go like this? You look fine to me. Look, we can just make it. You know where the symphony's playing? Of course, Ben. I've lived here for four years. Huh? It's the same place where the Vikings play, right? Yeah. Hi. How's the concert? Phyllis, perhaps it would be best to tell it as it happened. 
Chronologically, from my point of view, I am still in shock. <laughs> Lars and I were sitting enjoying one of Mozart's more light-hearted moments, uh, flutes, uh, the coming of spring, something I don't know. There was this commotion in the aisle. Late arrivals, boors, I thought. I turned to give them a good glare. It was Ben. I was so pleased. He and Mary, I thought, had come to join us. Oh, well, no. Then I saw it was not Mary. It was... It was... Rhoda. Rhoda. Right. Well, then they sat next to us. I struggled to maintain my poise, though my senses were reeling. I tried to enjoy the concert, even though she was snapping her fingers to Mozart. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phyllis, but it just doesn't sound all that tragic. I mean, it's not like a flood or anything. <laughs> My brother is in Rhoda's apartment at this moment saying goodnight to her. He has been doing so for quite some time. <laughs> if that isn't a flood, what is? Phyllis, 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 what's the worst thing that could happen? That they fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, has he converted you to classical music yet? He's certainly trying. I never knew I could have so much fun being bored out of my mind. <laughs> hey, listen, Mayor, will you keep stirring that sauce? Oh, right. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, sis. <laughs> Mary, you're not cooking for them. No, no, just stirring occasionally. I think Rhoda got in over her head with this gourmet feast and it wouldn't all fit on her hot plate. That woman has cast some sort of spell over Ben. No spell, Phyllis. It's just that in case you haven't noticed, Rhoda is very attractive. Is she? <laughs> is she, Mary? It must be on some level that I can't perceive, like ultraviolet light. <laughs> Or that whistle that only dogs can hear. <laughs> Mary, my reasoning is this. If I say anything to Ben about Rhoda's obvious shortcomings, uh, that may bring them closer together. Therefore, I reason, I shall be passive, even kindly. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Phyllis. Uh, chicken and mushroom time. Rhoda, I want you to know, dear, that I am not sick to my stomach over you and Ben. <laughs> Phyllis, that's, that's well, really. Will you stop sweating it? Things haven't gone that far. Yet. Ben probably hasn't even gotten past admiring her mysterious half-smile. Oh, yes, he has. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Phyllis. Rhoda's just kidding around. I don't hear any chicken and mushrooms up there. Phyllis, you're not going upstairs. No, it's much too quiet up there. Phyllis, if you're not careful, your ear will get all waffled. Hi, Phyllis. Mary, uh, I don't smell any gas. <laughs> Mary always thinks she smells gas fumes coming through there. Yeah, you know, dippy Mary. <laughs> Rhoda forgot plates. Oh, how madcap of her. You know, I don't know why I waited so long to visit Minneapolis. I'm really having a ball. No, you're not. <laughs> Thanks. I'll be late tonight, Phil. Don't wait up for me. <laughs> I, I don't know how long I can keep it up. Keeping up this happy exterior forever. Phyllis, would you be happier if Ben were having a miserable time? Of course. <laughs> Mary, what am I going to do? I think you're going to do what you usually do. You're going to get yourself all worked up, then you're going to let it all out, and you're going to embarrass everybody concerned. I don't do that. Yes, you do do that, Phyllis. No, mother did that. Phyllis, I don't know your mother. 
So you think I do that? Yes, I do, Phyllis. You don't know me at all. <laughs> but it's amazing how well you know my mother. <laughs> Oh, Mary, you have so much to do. Let me do that for you. Oh, thanks, Georgette. Or Georgette. Thanks, honey. If there's anything else I can do, just whistle. <laughs> Thank you. Mary, come have some to eat. Oh, thanks. Say, Mary, when did you get a piano? Oh, well, uh, it's from Phyllis. She rented it for me. You know how some people send flowers? Phyllis sends pianos. <laughs> I just love to stand around a piano and sing while somebody plays. I can only play one thing. Please play it. <laughs> I don't know the words to that one. <laughs> I hope I don't spoil your party. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you mean? Are they here yet? No, Phil, Phil what, what did you mean you, you don't I hope you spoil my party? It's just that when I'm this upset, Phyllis, listen, Phil, I only have about one big party a year, you know? And, and so because of the expense and everything, could you pick another night? <laughs> You're not asking me to. Close the door on my emotions, are you? Close it, Phyllis. Lock it. But keep it out of my party, please. Why don't you uh, go talk to Mr. Grant? See, right over there. Hey, Phyllis. How you doing? I'm worried sick about Ben and Rhoda. <laughs> well, uh-huh. Gee. Maybe you'd be a good person to talk to. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, who's Ben? Uh, that's Phyllis's uh, brother. She's worried sick about him and Rhoda. She wanted to talk to me about it. I don't want to. <laughs> Phyllis, you know, there some years I don't even have a party at all. This, this is the first party in a year and a half. Oh, Mary, it's okay. I'm not about to tell my private life to relative strangers. Good. Good. <laughs> I'm so glad she's not serving popcorn. Those little hard things get caught in my teeth. <laughs> Sometimes you can't get rid of them for days. <laughs> You. <laughs> I'm here with Ted. Who are you here with? I am alone, <laughs> waiting to see if my only brother is going to break my heart and throw away everything he struggled so hard for. I hope he doesn't do that. Break your heart and throw away everything he struggled for. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Oh, boy, have we had a crazy day. Oh, Rhoda. <laughs> I got a feeling we're going to have a crazy night, too. I have to speak to you immediately. It's vital. The rest of you go on with your party. It's important to me. <laughs> Rhoda, you going to make me face her alone? You bet. <laughs> okay, Phil, what's up? Rhoda, I want you to tell me the absolute truth. What's going on with you and Ben? Nothing, Phil. We've just been having a lot of fun together. No, Rhoda. I said you could be honest with me. Be honest with me. I am. I I'm being perfectly honest with you. Uh, he's going back to New York tomorrow. Well, I figure that's it. No, no. You're just telling me what you think I want to hear. I really want the truth, I am. Rhoda. I'm giving you the truth. No, Every the truth, I'm being totally I honest with truth. you. All right, all right, Phyllis. We got engaged ten minutes ago. We're getting married tomorrow. <laughs> okay? I see. <laughs> you see? Thank you for being honest with me. You're welcome. All right, attention, everybody. Gather around. Let's see if we can pick this party up and get it rolling. 
Well, there's this brand new game I just heard of the other day. Oh, Dad, I really don't think that... Mary, your party's dying. <laughs> it's called 20 Questions. Now, the rules are these. I think of something, and then you have to, in 20 questions, guess what it is. Now, it can be anything in the whole world. Animal, vegetable, rocks. <laughs> Sounds like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Really, it's a, it's a nice game. Well, at least give it a try. Uh, I, uh, I have to shove off. Uh, I really had a terrific time, Mary. Oh, really? Terrific. Yeah, I'll go with you, Lou. Uh, yeah. I don't want to miss my kids for a slumber party. Yeah. See you at work Monday. Right. Good night, Mary. I had a wonderful time tonight. We better go. I think your friend is upset. Oh. I'm going to go downstairs and make Phyllis the biggest slow gin fish she ever saw in her life. I'll help you. Dad? The answer is the Empire State Building. I win. Good night, Dad. Good night, Rhoda. Phyllis, for heaven's sake. I, I can't believe you took me seriously. What do you mean? <clears throat> Phyllis, Ben and I aren't getting married. He's not my type. What do you mean, he's not your type? <laughs> he is witty. He is attractive. He's successful. He's single. He's gay. He, <laughs> 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 he... He's what? He's gay. I thought, sure, you know, Phil. We're not getting married. Oh, Rhoda, I'm so relieved. Oh, man, it was a pretty good party. Oh, yeah. Well, a party doesn't have to last more than an hour to be good. Oh, come on, Rhoda, will you? Oh, Ben, you're playing. Play something for me. Okay. What do you want to hear? My dog food commercial or Mozart? Play whatever you feel. Turn the world on with her smile. Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile? Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it. With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell why don't you take it You're gonna make it after all You're gonna make it after all How can that be? There's nothing below the bottom. Yeah. We're next to the bottom. Uh. Or, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> oh, boy, I never thought something like this would make me happy, but this is terrific. If only we could keep it up. You know what this could mean? A congressional investigation of the rating system? Oh. Uh, boy, am I pooped. Hey, Ted, the new ratings came out. Oh? Ted, come back here. Oh, no, you just want to make me feel like the ratings are my fault. No, Ted, the ratings are good. Look. Go on. Oh, not bad. Not bad? What do you mean, not bad? That's the best we've ever done. Well, you guys may be satisfied, but not me. You know how I am in my quest for perfection. <laughs> I'll take off my makeup. Well, that's right, it's the first of the month, isn't it? <laughs> I gotta go tell the crew. This is gonna make them so happy. Yeah, I'll go with you. I want to see their faces. Tell them I get an extra ration of rum. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Grant. Georgia. Hmm. I was supposed to meet Ted. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, don't bother him. I'm sure he'll be right out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to bother you either. I'll wait outside. No, no. Come on back. It's nice seeing you again. <laughs> so, uh, how's the manicure job going? Oh, I quit that weeks ago. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what are you doing? I'm a golden girl now. <laughs> I go from door to door selling golden girl cosmetics. Ding dong, it's your golden girl. <laughs> Everything for the more beautiful you. <laughs> do you want to see my sample? Why not? What do you got? Bath oil beads. Makes you feel like you've been massaged by a thousand little hands. <laughs> oh I'm sorry they make me say that. <laughs> You're a real cutie, you know that? Thanks. What else you got? Wrinkle cream. Comes in three aromas. Fresh strawberry, fresh banana, and fresh unscented. <laughs> no. I don't think I want Edie to smell like a banana. I need the rating book. The crew doesn't believe me. Here. Hiya, George. Yes? Hi, Mary. I was just showing Mr. Grant my golden girl line. Oh, how's it going? Oh, like hotcakes. Good. <laughs> Hello, Ted. Told you, I don't like to smooch in public. I'm sorry, but can you go now? Oh, sure, only I'm a little tired tonight. So I'm going to go right home and log a little sack time. I'll call you tomorrow, maybe. He uh, really was tired. I mean, all you had to do was watch him on the show tonight. Yeah. Boy. Hey, hey, George Ed, I, I know if you're not doing anything tonight, why don't you come have dinner with Rhoda and me? Won't well, it be fun, just you, me, and Rhoda, huh? George Ed? What? Oh, thank you. I like that a lot. Okay, good. I tell you, I still have a little work to do, but why don't you meet me at my place around 8 o'clock? All right. Okay. Say, Georgette, I'll uh, take one of those uh, wrinkle cream things. <laughs> yeah, Lou, you owe it to yourself. <laughs> After all, it isn't every day you're number four. <laughs> Unscented. understand how Georgette could have been in such a good mood after Ted stood her up like that, and he does it all the time. Why don't you say something to him about it? Well, I can't. It's, I, I'm not Miss Fix-It. It's none of my business. About all I could do was give him a long, dirty look. What'd he do? Well, you know Ted. He thought I was coming on with him. <laughs> you know what really kills me? I am the one who introduced Ted and Georgette to each other. Mia, yeah, I met a guy who'd be really great for Georgette. He's sensitive. He's kind. And loving. Wait, what am I doing? I almost gave away a guy who's sensitive, kind, and loving. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you are right. She must like Ted. I mean, if she didn't, she wouldn't go out with him anymore. Right. I didn't like him, so I didn't go out with him anymore. <laughs> you went out with yes, Ted? once, once when? only. Around the holidays. Why? I don't know. I get a little crazy around Christmas. <laughs> there was old Ted with his silver hair and his jolly ho, ho, ho. Sort of a Santa figure for me. Well, why, why didn't you tell me? I did. You asked me, uh, what'd you do last night? And I said, I went out with some jerk. I just didn't tell you his name. Well, I sure wish you hadn't told me now. Why? Because when I heard you went out with Ted, I painted the doorknob. <laughs> Golden girl. Oh. Come on in, Georgette. I can't. It's locked. It's locked. Uh, well, uh, just uh, a minute. <laughs> Hello, Rhoda. Hi, nice Georgette. Hi, Mary. Nice Hi. to see you. Excuse me, Georgette. I gotta go clean off my hand. Does she do that every time she shakes him? <laughs> no, no, she was painting. Mary, I just love your apartment. Well, you've been here before. I know, but I just love your apartment. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is for you, Rhoda. It is. This is for you, Mary. Oh, 
Well, what are these for? Well, you two didn't let me pay for dinner last night, and I wanted to do something to say thank you. Oh, these are beautiful mm. placemats. Mm. I made them. I hope you like them. You made these? I love them. Oh, look at this. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to get a little couch to go with this. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Really? <laughs> Who's that one for? Oh, this is Ted's laundry. <laughs> you uh, do Ted's laundry, huh? Yeah. He likes the way I fluff and fold. <laughs> be going now. Uh, Georgette, ho hold it. I, um, I want to tell you about this wonderful guy that Rhoda has for you. Sure. Oh, no, that's silly, Georgette. I mean, I don't care if Ted knows I've introduced you to somebody else. Well, let him be mad. I'm not afraid of Ted Baxter. Bye-bye. Turn up the sound and see if you can figure out what's going on. Now for our closing humorous notes. In Stamford, Connecticut, Tom Campbell was excused from jury duty, but he came up with a very good excuse. He was a defendant. <laughs> and that was our humorous note for today. This is Ted Baxter. Good night and good news. I haven't seen Ted so angry since they canceled my mother the car. <laughs> What's he so mad about? Me. Lou, I want to call a meeting of the entire staff. <laughs> Out here. <laughs> this meeting will now come to order. Ted. To make an opening statement. I always like to think that our little newsroom was one big happy family. But in my innocence, little did I suspect we'd be harboring a backstabber in our very bosom. I'm going to reveal the name of that person. The backstabber is... Isn't this where the lights go off and Ted is found dead on the floor? <laughs> the backstabber is Mary Richards. Uh, Ted, look, couldn't we Who has about deliberately set out to poison it? the relationship between me and my woman. Ted. Admit it, Mary. Tonight, Georgette's going out with a guy that you fixed her up with. Yes, I admit it, but I really uh -huh. don't see... She admits it. Oh, okay, Ted, she admitted it. Is that it? No. I also want her to admit that she made a mistake and she won't do it again. Mary, tell him you made a mistake and you won't do it again. I'm not going to say anything like that. How's that, Ted? That good enough for you? <laughs> I'm going to the mat on this, Lou. This is big. It's not like the fresh towels for my dressing room. I'm not giving in this time. I'll tell you what, Ted. I'll talk to Mary. And I'll get back to you later. Say, how about those fresh towels? Okay, okay, okay. Mary first, then the towels. Mr. Grant, you don't have to say anything. I'll be okay. No, let's talk. No, really, I'm, I'm fine. Let's just forget about it. No, I, I can't forget about it. Oh, well, that's really very sweet of you, Mr. Grant, but honestly... Because it's... I agree with Ted. <laughs> you agree with Ted? Why? Because I don't think you should go messing around in Ted's personal life. Well, I don't see it that way, Mr. Grant. Sit down. Mary, what you're doing is liable to affect Ted's work. I don't see how this has anything to do with work. In the same way as my rule about nobody at the station being allowed to date Ted. We don't have a rule like that. Oh, well, Ted, you don't have to make it a rule. It just works out that way. <laughs> Which is why that girl is very important to him. Yeah, but she's very important to me, too. Mary, you're just going to have to see this my way. Well, I'm afraid I can't, Mr. Grant, so uh, if you'll excuse me. No, I can't excuse you. This isn't settled yet. Well, then I'll, I'll just have to go anyway. You're going to leave? Yes. Without my telling you it's okay? Yes. When? 
<laughs> now, of course, it would make it a lot easier if you would just say, good night, Mary. I can't say that because this meeting is not over. <laughs> well, good night, Mr. Grant. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're not going to say good uh, night. but I'll see him before I go home tonight and try to straighten things out. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I feel uh, exactly the same way. Uh, good. Good. Yeah. Oh, Mayor, by the way, by now I guess you found out that your attempt to break up George Etley didn't work. That lightweight you found her just couldn't hack the competition. <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, hi, Georgette. Yeah, he is. Just a moment, please. It's for you. Hi, baby. <laughs> tonight? Oh, no, not tonight. Tonight I've got other fish to fry. Um, maybe tomorrow. Why don't you call me tomorrow? Numero uno, Mayor. Numero uno. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Georgette. Listen, as long as you're not doing anything tonight, I'd like you to meet this terrific guy I know. <laughs> right, we'll double. I'll call you later and let you know what time. <laughs> How was the double date with Georgette? I mean, did you fix her up with a nice guy? Yeah, and it was uh, pretty awful. Awful? Well, he's one of the nicest guys I know. Sweet, gentle. And? And by the time the evening was over, this nice, sweet, gentle guy was treating her crummy. What do you mean, Mayor? She brings out the worst in men. I mean, I think we're going about this the wrong way. Ted's not the problem. It's Georgette. Yeah, I see what you mean. She's a professional victim. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Mary, I was like that once myself. Okay, a little different style, of course. A little louder, as we all know. But Mary, I never did a guy's laundry. <laughs> never did my laundry. Wait, it gets better. This guy that I fixed her up with last night called her up and said, how about dinner? She said, fine. And by the time we got over to her house to pick her up, she had made the dinner. Oh, she really is a pro. Yeah. What are we going to do about her, Rhoda? I mean, or even should we? I mean, I just don't know. Maybe we shouldn't, Mayor. I'm tempted to take advantage of her myself. <laughs> knock, knock. It's your golden girl. Your doorbell wasn't working. That's why I couldn't say ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your bath oil, please. Oh, thanks. I just ran out. <laughs> Georgia, would you like some coffee? No, but I'll make some if you want it. No, no, no. It's it's already made. You sure you like some? Okay, if you already made it. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Georgia, could you pick that up for me? Sure. Hello? Yes, she is. Just a minute, please. It's for me. <laughs> Yes, Ted. 
Okay, sure. Bye, bye, David. He just wanted me to add vitamin E and tiger's milk to his shopping list. <laughs> Georgia, uh, I, I think we ought to have a small talk. And you better sit down, because we're going to give it to you with both barrels. Oh, good. Bye, right here. <laughs> Look, about you and Ted. I know what you think about Ted, Mary. Uh-uh, no, we're not talking about Ted now. We're <laughs> mad at you, Georgette, for what you're doing. Then I won't do it anymore. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Georgette, what, what you're doing is not having enough respect for yourself. Georgette, what do you think of yourself? Yeah, come on, tell us. Well, I think I'm about five foot six, and I have sort of curlish blonde hair. No, no, Georgia, we don't mean what you look like. We're talking about what you are. Listen, say something positive about yourself. Well, I have good handwriting. <laughs> And I like animals. <laughs> and I think I understand why you're trying to help me. You do? Great. OK, now come on. Tell us something really positive about you. I'm good with my hands. <laughs> and I'm a pretty fair country cook. And I'd like to think I'm a nice person. Just. Nice? Very nice. <laughs> Damn nice. <laughs> now you make sure that Ted finds that out. Okay. I'll try and tell him sometime when we're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows when that'll be. <laughs> Want to have a pillow fight? <laughs> Ted, I don't feel like having a pillow fight tonight. Oh? <laughs> don't blow on my face, Ted. What's wrong? I thought you liked that. Not now. I want to talk. Can we have a pillow fight and then talk? <laughs> <laughs> no, I really feel like talking. All right, what do we talk about? Sports, news, weather? <laughs> Say, did you hear about that tidal wave in Peru? <laughs> Damage to livestock, crops, and property was estimated in the billions of dollars. Not that kind of talk. Ted, I think there's something we have to settle about our relationship. My funny Valentine. <laughs> Sweet comic Valentine. <laughs> you make me smile with my heart. I don't think we should see each other anymore. What? Why not? Say, has Mary been talking to you again? I think it's for the best all around. You're kidding. I'm not kidding, Ted. Oh, you're just in a lousy mood. You come to your senses. I mean it. My funny Valentine. <laughs> Sweet comic Valentine. Please don't make it any harder than it is, Ted. But that's our song, isn't it? I think you should go home now, Ted. Okay, if that's the way you want it, that's the way you're going to get it. I have to stay around here, you know. Plenty of fish to fry in the ocean. <laughs> and don't bother to change your mind, I'm going. So long, baby. <laughs> Thanks for the memory. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> I said I wanted to go, but I don't really want to go. I lied. You did? Don't. Don't make me go, Georgia. I can change. Just, just tell me what it is you want me to do, and I'll do it. You mean it? <laughs> sure, I mean it. Just, just tell me what it is, and I'll do it. Unless you don't want me to do it, then I won't do it. <laughs> well, 
I don't want to do your laundry anymore. <laughs> I match your socks, but I don't want to do your laundry. <laughs> okay, baby. What else? I don't want you to call me baby anymore. I'm not a baby. All right. What do you want me to call you? Let's see this. Uh, cookie. Bunny. Lambkins. Angel. Puss. Ducky. And if you don't like any of those, I'll have Murray come up with something. Georgette. I want Georgette. But that's so long. It's what I want. It's my name. Okay. Georgette. Ted, there's one more thing. What is it? You never told me you loved me. Well, that's not an easy thing for me to say. Why? Well, because when I said it before to people, no one ever said it back. I'll say it back. You will? I promise. Okay. <clears throat> I love, 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 <laughs> love you. And I love you, Ted. You do. <laughs> you want me to say it again? <laughs> I love you, Georgette. <laughs> want me to say it without moving my lips? I love you. <laughs> want me to say it like Lowell Thomas? This is Lowell Thomas saying, I love you. <laughs> You're so wonderful. Morning, Mayor. How was your weekend? I want to tell you about my weekend. I want to tell you about my weekend. Why don't you tell me about your weekend? Being with Georgette was like being with another woman. It's incredible. I mean, we were equal. We cooked dinner in the kitchen side by side. And afterwards, she selected the movie we went to see. I mean, for the first time, everything wasn't left up to me. And I understand you were responsible. Well, she's a friend, and I just wanted to be helpful. I just want you to know that as long as I live, I'll never forgive you. 